So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different on the channel. I've decided to get all my cameras together, I've got my full 2020 film camera collection, and I'm gonna go through it and I'm basically gonna rank the cameras. I'm gonna rank them in order of how often I use them, um, what I use them for, uh, the results I get, and ultimately the reasons that I would use certain cameras over other cameras in my collection. There's actually a few cameras in here that I've never talked about on the channel before, so there might be a couple of surprises. So without further ado, let's jump into the cameras. I've got 10 film cameras in my current collection. The first three cameras I'm going to talk about are a little bit more sentimental than the other ones. Um, I don't use them as much, so I'm going to go through those first. So first up, we have the Kodak Duoflex. This is an interesting camera. It was passed down to me uh, from my granddad. I've never used it. It's very rudimentary. Uh, it's basically, it has a shutter. Uh, you can hold the shutter as long as you want. There's no controls when it comes to shutter speed or anything like that. It's essentially what I would describe as like a pinhole camera, I guess. Uh, it's a bit more of a, probably more advanced than a pinhole camera. But from what I can see, uh, it is very basic in its build. Um, the back comes off. There's a spool in here, um, you wind like this, but there's no sort of like position to like stop the wind or anything like that. So I don't really know how that would um, play out. I feel like maybe you would waste some, you'd maybe wind it too far, waste some shots. But yeah, not something I've ever used. I might give it a go at some point, but I feel like there's gonna be a lot of trial and error to get this working uh, in terms of, you know, not having any settings to play with or just being able to wind it in a in a steady manner. So next up, we've got the Minolta 700. This was passed down to me from my grandmother. This was probably, this was the first film camera that I ever used. So this kind of got me into it. At the time when I was shooting digital, my grand basically gave me this. She used to take a lot of photos when she was younger. She doesn't really do that any, anymore much at all. So. Um, yeah, she just gave it to me because she knew I was, I, I was into photography and I had some different digital cameras and wanted to see if I would have a play around with it. It's actually quite digital. There's a lot going on in terms of like autofocus and auto wind and stuff like that. So it's a bit tricky to get the results sometimes. My experience of it is that I've found that I've missed frames quite a few times. I think that's, it's not really a reflection of the camera. I think it's just because it's old. So maybe sort of a quarter of the shots would be blank, um, which is not, not ideal, but obviously that's not the camera, that's just age. So yeah, this is probably not something I'm gonna use again. Uh, this is well and truly decorative now in my collection. Next up, we have another Minolta. This is the Minolta XGM. Again, this was given to me by a family member. This was my um, father-in-law gave me this. This is a pretty solid camera. Uh, I've used this quite a lot traveling a couple of years ago before I had um, sort of other cameras to take around with me. My review would be, I like this camera. I think it works well. It's, it's, a, it's a nice camera. Um, I think the one thing I would probably change if I was gonna use this again would be the lens. I don't think the lens is as sharp as other ones that you could get for this camera. Um, and it's definitely not as sharp as some of the other lenses that I've got on other cameras. So yeah, this one's kind of, again, occupying the sentimental, more decorative part of the collection now, but I was using this. And if you're looking for something to pick up that's probably quite cheap, this is a solid option. Yeah, it works. It's very sturdy. It's all made out of metal. Minolta's pretty solid. So I would recommend that if, if you're getting into photography, like a first camera or something you want to play around with perhaps. Next up, we have the Fujifilm Instax wide. This is an absolute beast. Uh, it's pretty big. It's almost bigger than, it's bigger than quite a few of my other cameras, which considering the quality of the shots you get out of it, um, doesn't really warrant being that big, but it's obviously inst instant film. The lens is, um, as you can imagine, fairly basic. Uh, you're not going for, yeah, you're not putting a Zeiss lens on something like this. Um, you know, this is this is a bit of fun. I've probably taken more photos on this camera though than a lot of my other cameras. I keep it in my flat. Whenever people come around, I take a photo, we put it on the fridge. It's great for memories. In the past, I have used it 
a few times on portraits. It's not ideal. It is, it is a range finder. It's not great for portraits. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend using it for that, but it's, it's a fun addition to your arsenal if you want to just whip something out, but obviously it is massive. So, you know, if I'm looking to do sort of proper portraits on instant film, I have a back for my RZ, which I use uh, instead of this now. So next up, we have the Mamiya 645. I've had this camera for a number of years now. It was featured on the channel ooh, a while ago. I think it was like episode six or seven, perhaps. We took different pictures of the South Bank and sort of skateboarders and stuff. Honestly, I haven't used this camera. I used it in that video and I used it one other time uh, at a party with some friends just to kind of test it. And I just haven't used it since. I think for me, it just doesn't have a purpose. It sits in the middle of obviously some of the six by seven cameras that I have and then 35 mil. It isn't necessarily something that I need anymore in my collection. I haven't used it, I haven't felt the need to use it. But that isn't to say this isn't a, isn't a nice camera. I think I might give it another go. Maybe I'll put a flash on it. I think that could be quite fun actually. But for me right now, I would probably consider, I have been considering selling it for a number of years. So next up we have the Contax N1. This is again, something that was featured on the channel, I think once, possibly twice, quite a while ago. Honestly, I, again, I haven't used it recently, but I do really want to use it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to make a point to try and use this again this year. It is a zoom lens. It's got a Carl Zeiss 28 to 80 zoom lens, uh, which is a really nice lens. Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully this will be on the channel in the future. Um, and it's also a really nice looking camera. I think this is probably one of my favorite looking 35 mil cameras that I, that I know of. So next up, we are getting into the big boy territory. We've got the Mamiya 7. Arguably, this could go higher on a list. And I think for a lot of people, this would be possibly at the top. The reason it's not up there on my list, like right at the top, is just the type of photos that you take with it. This is perfect for street, landscape. It's not ideal for portraits. The results you get from those sorts of things is not something that's excites me that much. So yeah, this is very much something I keep in my back pocket. Well, I, I don't keep it in my back pocket because it's, it's too big, but I keep for specific occasions if I'm going out to shoot in the street. I, I have recently been using it quite a bit. I'm trying to use it more because it is just a really nice camera and I, I do like using it. I just struggle a little bit with the results compared to some of the other cameras that I'm going to talk about in a minute. I do think for me, one of the big things on this camera is the fact that it's a rangefinder. I'm so used to using uh, like an SLR style that rangefinders for me, they just don't seem to to work as well for what, I, for what I like doing. So yeah, it's definitely up there and I will probably not be getting rid of this. Um, I would also like to try a Mamiya 6 at some point. I think that'll be a nice thing to explore. But yeah, for the minute, Mamiya 7, really solid camera. If you get the opportunity to pick one up for a reasonable price, do it. It's a lovely camera and it looks beautiful as well. Okay, we're getting into the top three now. This is the Shika T5. This is my take everywhere camera, really. I don't always take medium format with me most of the time, especially on a holiday, if I'm going out to see friends. I love this camera because I can take it with me and I'm not worried. Um, I think if this was a Contax T2, for example, I'd be a little bit more worried. For me, this is very comparable to a, to a T2 or a T3 um, Contax, that is. For me, this is my favorite point and shoot camera. I've used this regularly for probably coming on to sort of five years now, and it is still going. It's still on the first battery, has flash, it's great for just daylight, great for flash. The meter in it is really good. It, uh, you don't do anything. It's point and shoot, bang. And it nails it nearly every time. I'd say 99% of the time, this camera is focusing on what you want and it is exposing correctly, which is, I don't know, I can't argue with that. For me, that's exactly what I want in a camera. I want to, <laughs> 
I want it doing all the work for me um, so that I can be on holiday, I can have a drink, you know, I don't need to be worrying about what I'm doing with this because I get it out, I snap, and the results are always really fun. So this is my memory camera. This is my, this is my friends and family. I sometimes use it a little bit for fashion stuff. If I want specifically that look, if I want a flash look, I'll get it out and I'll take some shots. But 90% of the time, this is sort of a travel and um, family and sort of memory kind of camera, I guess. Next up, the Pentax 6-7. This is my medium format all-rounder. This is something you can take on the street. You can do portraits with this. You can travel to an extent, it's, you know, it's still big, but um, I've taken this a lot of different locations. I took this to Japan, which was a real ball lake, to be honest, uh, <laughs> taking it around with me. If I'm going somewhere and I want something that's relatively portable, um, but still is going to give me that medium format look and it's still going to give me those portraits that I like as well as being able to adapt to the situation. This is the camera. This is the camera I would take. The big boy. On the top spot of this list, I think a lot of people would have probably expected this. It is my most used camera when it comes to this channel and my more sort of professional looking work. This is obviously the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2. Um, I've had this for about s probably six, seven years now. I bought this camera specifically because I wanted to achieve a certain look, which I was able to do with this camera. I have a range of lenses. I have the 110, I have the 180, and I have a two, can't remember what it is now, 200 and something lens as well. So for me, this is a portrait camera. I, I, don't, I don't use anything, I don't use this for anything else really. But obviously, detachable backs, everything is modular on this, the lens has come off, the viewfinder, you can replace it with a prism. Uh, you can take the backs off, you can have multiple backs, multiple size film camera backs, all that sort of good stuff. So this is my first medium format camera and it will probably always be my favorite camera um, just because of the results that I get with this camera and that's why I love it. So yeah, that is my 2020 film camera collection. I'm very happy with the cameras that I have at the moment. I don't really feel like I have much of a need to buy anything new at the moment. If anything, I've probably got a few too many cameras, so I might look to sort of get rid of a few. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, give us a subscribe. You can also support the channel over on Patreon. There's a link in the description. So head over there if you'd like to do so. You can find us on Instagram as well. So go give us a follow if you haven't already. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.